Rescue comes as most emergency teams turn to the bleak task now of recovering bodies. Uh, Hala Garani was there as this uh, young man was rescued and she joins us now from Port-au-Prince. Incredible for you. I mean, you watched this moment by moment as they struggled to get this man out. Tell us how it played out. Well, it was interesting because uh, until the last second, we were getting minute by minute upda updates by the French rescue servers who led this operation. And we could tell towards the end that they were getting to ready to rescue this 24-year-old Wisman Jean-Pierre because they had, uh, they had dropped down a body board down this hole. And you could tell just from the buzz among rescue workers that something significant was about to happen. We were, in fact, given five minutes and told, you know what, in five minutes time, we think he's going to be pulled up. Well, as you said, we were there. We watched this whole story unfold. And here's our report. 11 days underground, clawing his way out of a dark hole, Wisman Jean-Pierre has only a few yards to go to freedom. This dramatic video given to us by French authorities shows the 24-year-old pushed out of the rubble of a four-story building. He survived that long because of sheer luck, caught in an air pocket and surrounded by food and drink from a shop on the ground floor. The gathered crowd, first hushed, erupted in spontaneous applause as the young man was taken by ambulance to a French field hospital. Because we have a work round, um, together all uh, all the staff, and uh, and we we, we are um, very happy. It's very emotional. Yeah. A rescue that would probably have never happened had it not been for the dogged determination of Wisman's family. Wisman's brother Jean Eli told me, "I spoke to him. I called his name. I knew he was alive." He said he tried to get officials' attention for days, but it took the help of a Greek journalist to mobilize the massive rescue effort. Another family member on the scene worriedly showed me a picture of Wismond. He was waiting too, and hoping. As the day unfolded, reinforcements were trucked in. Ordinary Haitians pitched in to help, and rescuers worked for hours under a flimsy tin roof and deep into the ground to save the young man's life. At the hospital later, Wisman was well enough to speak to CNN. He moved his arms and legs because he was not crushed by the falling building. Now he needs hydration and rest. A moment of true joy in a country with little to celebrate. Well, Visman Jean-Pierre told rescue workers that around him he knew of at least three people who'd been crushed in the rubble of the Hotel Napoli Inn, but he also told rescue workers that for the last few days he hadn't heard from them uh, at all, Rosemary. Hella, it is indeed a stunning rescue and a, a real case of being in the right place at the right time. What is this young man's current condition? Do we know? Well, he was taken to a French field hospital, as we said in that report, um, and he was scheduled to be discharged today, which is pretty amazing in itself after having spent almost 12 days trapped underground. Thankfully, as we learned, he had uh, he had uh, he was stuck in this shop in this on this ground floor level of a shop, so he had. Uh, to drink. He had food as well, so he was able to survive that long. But he had absolutely no crush injury, so as a result, doctors were scheduling uh, a discharge today, and we're actually going to go out and find him uh, and uh, uh, report on his reunion with his family members, who must be uh, very relieved at this point and delighted and overjoyed. Rosemary? Hella, what was it like, really, from your point of view? You've, you've just arrived there, you're on the ground, and you hear about this man defying the odds. Uh, the government had said, in actual fact, rescue operations were at an end, but uh, these rescue teams have not given up. What were you thinking? What were you feeling when you were watching this unfold? Well, it was ironic that it happened on the day uh, that the UN said the Haitian government was basically calling off or significantly scaling down rescue operations 11 days into this tragedy. Um, it was really just uh, one of those stories that you hear about, you investigate, you go on the scene, you try to figure out if there's any truth to it. Very early on, we realized there was truth to it because I spoke with the French rescue workers who told me, look, we've made verbal contact, and this guy has told us he can move his extremities, he can speak. Uh, 
he can see our light. So we knew very early on that something significant was about to happen, as unlikely as it was. Uh, and we started looking into, you know, what the record was for someone surviving this long after an earthquake under the rubble. Um, and it was 14 days, and we were 11 days in. And I think the fear among people observing uh, this whole story and watching this whole story unfold was that, um, you know, he might be pulled out and then have some severe medical problem. But when he was eventually pulled out, uh, Rosemary, he was actually smiling, moving, you know, and then we saw him in the hospital a few hours later and, and he seemed to be doing okay with no apparent physical injury on his body. Just an incredible man continuing to defy the odds if he's going to be released from hospital. Ahala Garani on the ground there in Port-au-Prince. Thanks so much.